Hey guys, well I'm out in the shop today. You guys remember this machine here. This is the PM727MXL, the linear rail conversion that I started uh, a while back. I haven't really done much to it since the first of the year. The next thing in the whole process was actually getting the saddle made. There was a couple of things I could have worked on uh, before that, but mainly was getting the saddle made. I recently moved forward with this a little bit further and machined the saddle. Now, if you guys recall, this was a, just a slab of inch and a quarter thick steel. I went over to a buddy of mine's house and uh, he has a couple of Fidel's and we threw this up on there and machined it out. I got a little bit of video footage on that. I wasn't really concerned too much about filming. I was just mainly concerned about getting the part made, but uh, I did take some video footage. I, I have to tell you that was my first look at a uh, full-size Fidel. It's a 50-20, so he can get six six-inch vices on there. Uh, the thing is gigantic com in comparison to uh, one of these little hobby mills but it was quite interesting actually so take a look at the video footage of machining out this saddle zero here Well, you can see guys that this machine here is not very loud at all and uh, we were able to have a conversation and you could still hear us in the video footage with the machine in the background not to mention that this is a three-phase machine running on a American rotary phase converter that was sitting about five feet away in the garage now this machine is a Fidel 5020 and it was in a two-car garage um, yeah, I was I was impressed with that in itself. Of course, it took up uh, three quarters of a bay. However, it does fit. And this machine was uh, massive in comparison to my Precision Matthews. 
the table itself will hold six or five six inch vices, excuse me, and uh, was really impressive. So you can see that we squared up the vise there and made sure that the machine was square before we started. We also put the stock in there and squared it up, did all that before we started machining. Now, Ian and I had spoke, and I had also spoke with Wyatt earlier about machining such a big uh, slab of steel, and we were a little concerned with, um, after taking so much metal out, that the part would warp. So, uh, Ian decided to, that we would just, you know, spend as much time we needed to, and we take uh, small cuts and try to... Uh, minimize any kind of warpage whatsoever so we roughed it a couple of times not taking full depths in order to uh, make sure that we were not going to warp the part so the feeds and speeds we were running here was around 20 inches per minute on the feed and i think 60 to 80 thou width of cut we had a a good amount of time to work on this he didn't have anything scheduled for the day, so we just kind of hung out and took our time and machined this out. So first we machined the pocket for the X-axis ball nut mount there in the center. And then now what you see is we're machining the datum for the X table. This here is the top side of the saddle. And so it's just going back and forth and machining that datum. Now, he didn't refine any of the G-code. Uh, I sent him the model, and he just threw some, some cam operations on there, and uh, we didn't go back and refine it. We talked about this as it was running, that he could have machined one side and then went to the other. But again, he was a little concerned about warpage, so he was trying to take metal out equally and try to prevent any type of warpage. So we finished rough, roughing the uh, part out there and uh, just taking a look at it, making sure that it's smooth on the bottom surface there. And then we went back after this and we went back and uh, did our final pass on there. And you can see it's starting now. So we're just going back and we're doing a skim on the surface there of the bottom and also we're going to go back and just kiss that datum. We're just taking very little off just to make sure that it's nice and flat and if there was any kind of bowing or twisting we clean that up. Now here we're just checking it one more time before we get started. With the next operation, everything looks really good. Uh, we were pretty pleased with the way it turned out overall. So we're just checking, making sure that our datum width is correct there. And we've got the right measurement. And here you can see we're just drilling our holes now for our uh, mounting our linear block. Spot drilling here and then we're going to come back and um, do a drill operation. There were a total of 16 holes here with uh, 16 counter bores for the heads of the bolts. So it went pretty quick with the Fidel here. Uh, does a really good job. I noticed that the linear moves or the rapids here were not diagonally. They would 
that the y axis would move and then the x axis would move or vice versa but it wouldn't move diagonally i don't know if that's the way the uh, g code is outputted uh for the pedal or all right well you can see ian has a pretty nice setup with that fidel now i've got the table flipped over and i've got it on top of the uh, saddle so you can kind of see how it's going to look when it gets all done i had a lot of people asking questions about uh how much z height am i going to lose um, with this setup i don't really think i'm going to lose any because I tried to make sure that we kept it the table height the same so the Precision Matthews the 727 the, the saddle is really thick a lot of people get uh, misinformation on the Precision Matthews the PM25 the PM30 the PM728 VT those machines are nothing like the Precision Matthews 727 the 727 is similar to the 932. It's, it's, it's a little brother to the RF45 style mills. Same gearbox, same or similar gearbox. It's just sm a little smaller. And so the saddle is a lot thicker. And I did a comparison video of the G0704 saddle with the Precision Matthews 727 and you can definitely see in that video the difference actually I did some machining for a buddy of mine so the relationship between the table and the top here is three and three quarters a little bit less and that's exactly uh, what it is in the stock form so I did, shouldn't lose any of the Z travel I mean that's 12 inches and I've got another three inches there so that's at least 15 and I'm not I'm not even all the way up. I've got about another I can at least go up another three inches and feel comfortable. So I'm gonna have about 18, 17 to 18 inches of Z height, I believe, uh, when it's all said and done. So what's next for the uh, the linear rail conversion? Next, I'm going to probably uh, start working on the y-axis mount and get all of that uh, axis connected. It's got to be connected to the saddle before I can actually get the rest of the stuff on there. So it's going to be a trick trying to mount these linear blocks and get everything lined up and, and on the machine. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes also need to work on the X axis mount and get that going and then really that's that's pretty much it except for wiring um, I don't have the linear blocks screwed on yet I'm waiting on the right uh, length bolts so I've got some of those ordered and uh, so we'll be bouncing back to this linear rail conversion from time to time stay tuned for some update up uh, coming videos on this linear rail conversion and uh, yeah guys if you're new to my channel and you're just tuning in click on the subscribe button down here below that way when I post a new video they'll send you a link and if it's something you're interested in you can stop by and check it out thumbs up if you like the videos please subscribe thanks for watching and most importantly be safe